Thanks for joining me today. I'm glad you're all here. If something happens, 911, okay? I've been training for this for days. The CDC from Atlanta, Georgia sent me this sample. <clears throat> they sent it here to Flynn Scientific because I'm the only one in the country that's able to handle these. I work for the camphor lice specialists. And what we're going to do is see how bad. They said they had a computer bug. Oh, I don't know if I should do this or not, but we'll see. Sample PJMC0308 being put into a Petri dish has some water in it. I hope we're okay. It looks like a white crystal, but I don't know. We'll give it a little shot here and see. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I was not expecting that at all. I wish I had some camphor lice detoxification juice somewhere because I know I could use that now. I think that's what it said in the training manual. So can you use camphor lice detoxification juice. Would it, would it, uh, oh, maybe that's what this is. Camphor lice detoxification juice. For recording purposes only, we have some white crystals, but they look to be alive, swimming around in our dish there. I don't know what they're doing down there in Atlanta. They got some crazy things going on. Let's see if this camphor lice detoxification juice will work. I'll get some. Oh, I think we're safe. We've stopped them dead in their tracks. Whew. Mission accomplished. <clears throat> okay. Every day you walk into your classroom, we do a little bit of acting. One of the things that we use in our classrooms are humor, and it's a way to make connections with kids. I think humor is a very, very powerful tool. It builds rapport with your students, it gets them interacted, it brings them on board. One thing I caution you about is make sure you use your humor appropriately. Make sure that you use it, you know, interspersed and realize that we're trying to build a foundation here. I think as I walk into my classroom, um, I think of chemistry and being able to teach chemistry as a gift. And all of these demos and all this stuff that we see, people have done before us. You get people like Lee Merrick and Bob Lewis and Bob Becker and the two people that I've been fortunate enough to work with with Flynn with Penny Sconzo and Jeff Hepburn. And they have given us this, but we make it our own in our classrooms. You are watching this. You have to make it your own in your classroom. If you try to go in your classroom and teach like anybody else, you probably won't be successful. So we have little things, tips, and tricks that make it your own. And it's a powerful tool if you can do that and bring your kids along with you. Um, so really, what did we have going on here? What it is is we have uh, little pieces of camphor. Camphor is a nonpolar solid. Um, that will sublime, go right from the solid to the liquid stage, uh, or, I'm sorry, the solid to the gaseous phase uh, right away because of the weak intermolecular bonds. Well, because those solids are irregularly shaped and the gas is coming off at, um, in irregular directions, it starts to spin them. Water is a polar molecule. The camphor nonpolar, they don't want to interact and it's not going to dissolve. What we do then is we get just a little bit of dish soap. The dish soap has a polar end and a nonpolar end. And what it does is it makes that link between the nonpolar camphor and the polar water molecule. It doesn't stop the sublimation process, but it slows it down enough. And you can see it also breaks the surface tension of the water, and that's what stops the camphor lice dead in their tracks. Make up some skits in your classroom, use some humor, make chemistry fun. You want those kids to walk into your classroom going, hey, what is it we're going to do today? <laughs>